with a little recap from uh, this past weekend's Arkansas game. Um, sure. Thank you. Uh, just a recap from the game. Certainly, uh, the first thing that stood out, a great crowd, great atmosphere, loud, uh, just exactly what you expect at Tiger Stadium. So certainly appreciate um, our fans showing up and um, creating such a great home field advantage for us. Uh, we really appreciate that and, and look forward to seeing that again back in, uh, when we get back in uh, October. Um, you know, uh, a battle for the boot, a rivalry game, Arkansas. Um, you know, I was really impressed after watching the film. Um, you know, they, they played very well, well-coached football team on uh, all sides. Um, you know, their offensive game plan was outstanding. Defensively did some really good things. Uh, and, and, you know, we had to overcome. We got off to a slow start offensively, but our defense – you know, didn't. Uh, they, they actually got off to a really good start and kind of gave us a chance to, um, to kind of settle in offensively. And, um, you know, once we were able to do that, um, you know, got it moving. I, I thought what stood out was, was our, you know, our perseverance. Uh, you know, we get down 14 to 3 with like 48 seconds to go in the half. And, you know, that, that was a huge touchdown for, for Arkansas. But I our offense uh, moves the ball down the field with 48 seconds on the clock and scores. Um, and, and that was a, a big touchdown. We come out in the second half, score again, um, and, and, and turn the momentum uh, around. And, and certainly, you know, Arkansas answered, and we answered back twice when they tied the score. Uh, but I think what was, was really big in that game, and, and, you know, sometimes you look at it, you know, differently after the game and when you get a chance to watch the film. Um, but after we gave up the, the, uh, the fake field goal, uh, the way our defense uh, dug in and uh, refused to give up a score, a touchdown in that situation was huge. Um, that can be uh, overlooked in many instances, but um, the resolve of our defense to dig down and hold them to three after giving up um, a fake field goal, which, as you know, emotionally can, can take the win right out of you. Our guys hung in there, battled, um, and, and only gave up the field goal and forced them to use two timeouts because that comes back later when they don't have any timeouts where we can control the clock later in the game. So very pivotal, pivotal situation in the game where our defense was, um, was really resilient. Um, now, there was some self-inflicted wounds that we're going to have to clean up. Um, but, but all in all, um, you know, Daniels again, neighbors, um, you know, the running game was, was really solid, uh, really liked what we saw there. Thomas, uh, there were playmakers out there on the offensive side of the ball. Um, we come up with a big sudden change turnover. So a lot of good things there uh, to get that win. And, and again, things to build off of going into this week against, you know, Ole Miss, who, who we know uh, to be an outstanding football team. We got to go there on the road. Um, and again, outstanding offense, uh, number two in the SEC. Um, very aggressive defense, uh, you know, one of the, the top defenses in the SEC. I think they're second in the SEC in sacks. They're going to get after it. Jackson Dart's been, you know, resilient, tough, physical quarterback. Um, you know, he's thrown for over 1,000, and, and he's rushing the football as well. And we know about Jutkins from last year. Um, Watkins leads them in receptions. Uh, and then, you know, again, a, a very difficult defense uh, uh, to go against because they're so physical and aggressive. So, um, you know, a rivalry game again in terms of the Magnolia Bowl trophy game. Um, and again, got to go on the road against another SEC opponent. So looking forward to the challenge. Uh, we've got some things that we've got to get better at, um, just like everybody else in the country, but looking forward to the challenge. So uh, one thing I do want to announce, Jaden Daniels was the SEC uh, co-offensive player of the week for the second consecutive week. So um, congratulations to him. And he also becomes only the sixth player in FBF hist FBS history with 10,000 passing yards and 2,000 uh, rushing yards. So uh, congratulations to him as well.
So open it up to questions. A lot of great positives, certainly, but uh, you talked about the unforced errors or self-inflicted wounds. How much of those were just responsibility losses? I guess, you know, obviously we know the long, deep toss was, but the tight end across the middle, what did you see in that one as well? Yeah, so they flooded a, a zone uh, into the short field. Um, and again, you know, that's a pass coverage situation where, you know, we certainly have to recognize that and, and, and pick that up. That That's a you know, common occurrence in college football where, you know, somebody floods his own and, and, a, and a linebacker doesn't see it and he's, he's got to get to that coverage. So um, we weren't in a great coverage for that. Um, if we're in a rolled coverage or a different coverage variation, we probably pick that up pretty easily. Um, but that's something that we've got to get uh, taken care of. No, that, that would actually be the Mike linebacker. Coach, right here, uh, you talked a little bit about this in the preseason, but just can you talk about more about Brian Thomas's, just the way he's evolved, uh, obviously a big game for him, but he's been kind of quietly putting together solid performances. What does that do for your offense, and what kind of challenge is that for now an opposing defense, neighbors on one side, Thomas on the other? Well, as you know, neighbors is getting a lot of attention. You know, if they're playing man coverage, that safety is definitely tilted towards neighbors, as you can imagine. And in some instances, he's getting bracket coverage, which means – you know, they're playing a zone to one side with him and then man on the other side. And so you've got to be able to find other matchups. Um, it's almost uh, a sense where they're trying to take him out of the game. Uh, you've got to find the other one-on-one -on -one matchups. And so, um, you know, BT gets some one-on-one -on -one matchups that are favorable. And uh, Jaden's seeing that and, and we're taking advantage of it. And Brian's, you know, obviously very capable to, to win in those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Hey, Brian, on your left. Yeah. A few weeks ago, you had mentioned that you have more than 11 on defense. It's pretty clear y'all are using a lot, of, a lot more players now. Yep. Have you exa exhausted all of your personnel options defensively to where the, the guys you have right now are the guys you feel like you, you can roll with? Yeah, I think so. I don't think there's anybody else that we would bring into the game. You know, we'd like to get, you know, obviously everybody healthy, um, you know, get getting all of the guys out there physically. Spates obviously is one guy that we'd like to get back out on the field. Um, I think there's some other tweaks that we can do defensively to see that we get guys in the right position um, and, and let them um, influence the game accordingly. Um, so... I, I, there's not another guy that, you know, let's take a red shirt off of a particular player or another guy that's going to get in the rotation. You might see some players play a little bit more, um, but, but the group of guys that we have playing on the defensive side of the ball, we just have to play, um, uh, to me, and we were talking about this from a defensive uh, perspective, uh, we have to do the ordinary things extraordinarily well. And I know that's an overused cliche that we hear so many times, but we, we, we're having a tendency of trying to chase too many plays on defense. And, and what I mean by that, we're trying to make plays that are really not our place to make, and we just need to do our job. And I think once we settle down and, and just do the, the ordinary things extraordinarily well, this, this can be a really good defense because it's shown itself to have resiliency and toughness uh, and, and the players necessary to do that. Yeah, Brian, right here. Uh, do you feel like this year's team is starting to play with the same resolve that last year's team had? Can you start to see that? I'm seeing that starting to evolve in that identity. And look, I, I mean, th there, there are times when you play – uh, in quality competition that um, you, you get a better sense and feel for your team, and, and especially when you're down, right? Uh, we weren't down against Mississippi State at any time. We weren't down at any time uh, against Grambling. Um, and we, we really didn't have the right mix, uh, a mindset going into the Florida State game. So this was our first chance really to, to identify who we were when we got down late. And we immediately responded, and uh, we came out in the second half and, and played the kind of football that I expect, um, never flinching, knowing that we were going to take some more shots. Uh, and when we gave up a play, 
uh, we we forgot about it and we got to the next play. And so that, in answering your question, starts to to form an identity as to who you are. And I think that we're seeing some resiliency from last year to this year. Hey, Coach, right in the middle. Um, although he had some growing pains coming into the season, Deshaun Womack has made an uh, impact coming off the edge. Um, how has he grown as a player, and how will his role uh, expand moving forward? You know, he's young. He's learning. Um, you know, he couldn't even keep his helmet on when he was out on the field. So we got to teach him how to buckle his chin strap and, and do all that kind of stuff. So, um, look, I mean, it's – it's a process. I know everybody wants to make a superstar of all these guys in the first time. He's going to be a really good player. Um, and and I, I don't want to take anything away from the young man. Um, but there's a process that he's got to continue to do the little things the right way. And he's making progress. And as you see, we're getting him on the field in our, in our dime package, in our nickel package, because he can rush the passer. Um, and and I'm, I'm pretty confident you're going to see more of him. But – Let's just tap the brakes here a little bit. He's, he's not ready for, you know, um, a starting position. Um, but he's going to definitely help our defense. Brian, down here. In the, yes. Hey. Um, you said just tweaks on defense to get the guys in the right position. What sort of things is that? Is it like a really big overhaul or just sort of? No, no, like? this is not. I mean, again, I, I gave you some, I think, clear examples of when a defense is tested, especially after the fake field goal, you get a chance to see what you're made of. I mean, that's an easy opportunity to lay down. That group did not lay down. Uh, they were challenged um, in that situation to come up with some plays. Um, their, their eye control was excellent. Their assignments were excellent. We – we just need to do that on a more consistent basis. And we, we tend to lose our focus. Um, and, and we just have to drive that home with this group that when, when they are um, doing the little things the right way, they're a pretty good defense. When they try to do like your job and somebody else's job and not their own job, we're not so good. And that's just the maturation of the group. We've got young corners that don't have a lot of experience, um, and, and, and our safeties have to be consistent. They're trying to make up for some uh, inexperience and trying to do a little bit too much, and they just got to do their jobs. And, and when that group really comes together um, with our front seven, I think we're, we're going to be a really good defense. Uh, Coach, some more on the secondary. Is, is it sometimes a case of the pass rush isn't getting there quite in time and they've got more to do? And then on one of those plays, I don't know if it's the corner thought he had help over the top and guy ran past him or what, what is it? No. He, 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 that would be great. His mom and dad would like you to think that. Um, and everybody that buys his jersey, uh, he knew that obviously he made an error. And, 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 and look – He's not the only one that's made errors, you know. I mean, this is not about one singular play. This is about staying focused all the time, doing your job. And, and he lost sight and, and in terms of what he should have been doing on that particular play. What's really important here is, more than anything else, um, our players can't be trying to make plays. He saw the quarterback as a run threat. That's not his job. His job was to be the deep half defender. Go do your job. Um, there's somebody else assigned to him. And we just have to be consistent with that. And, and um, you know, nobody has patience with that. But we do have some young players out there that we – sometimes we have to understand that the learning curve, there's a little bit of it going on right now. Uh, hey, Coach, I, I know he's been banged up a little bit, but he played this last week. Just what, what do you think is the key to unlocking Mason Taylor a little bit this season? Yeah, I mean, I thought he was outstanding. Uh, look, he, he, he was playing at probably 60 70%, um, and he gave us everything. He was gritty. He was tough. Um, you know, he made a couple of big catches when we needed him late. Um, I don't think there's any key to unlocking him other than just getting him healthy. When, when he's healthy, he's a very important part of what we do, and, and he's, he's going to contribute heavily to what we do once we get him at full strength.
Gotcha. Going back to the end of the game, uh, you talked about how you decided to handle the clock, but why run three plays there instead of taking a knee three times? Um, well, we weren't going to uh, score. Um, so, you know, in that situation, you could definitely make the case, and we talked about using our center play, which is to just slide the ball to the middle um, of the field with a direct snap and, and uh, center the ball. That was certainly an option. We discussed it, um, but we felt more comfortable uh, with the, uh, the shotgun snap because that's what we do most of the time. Hey, Coach, over here. Uh, Andre Sam in the back end, uh, secondary for y'all, had an interception for y'all this past Saturday. He's been very aggressive making tackles, uh, been kind of all over the place, all over the field. But what, what's basically your just uh, input on what you've seen from Andre Sam? Yeah, he's made progress. I'll, I'll give you an example. The interception he made, he would not have made that interception earlier in the year, especially against Florida State. He wasn't playing the post deep enough. He's getting great depth on the post now so he can break up on the over route. Um, we were a little bit short in depth in that deep post um, position. So uh, he's done a really good job there. He's got to continue to make those open field tackles. Um, so that'll be an area that we'll, we'll concentrate with him on. Um, but he's so coachable um, and plays with great energy, great enthusiasm. Love, love to coach him every day, and um, he just wants to get better. Um, that's, that's, um, all right. <laughs> that's a guy that you want to coach. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, last year at times, Jaden, if he'd had a slow start, Auburn, Arkansas, I know he's banged up a little that game, but that it kind of continued through four quarters. Yeah. This year, a game like this, he has a slow start, but then ends up winning SEC Player of the Week and bouncing back. What does that speak to in terms of maturation or growth or you know whatever it is with him as a quarterback? Great coaching, obviously. Uh, you know, that's, that's what it is. Um, Certainly, this is about Jaden Daniels' experience and, you know, knowing what he needs to do to get himself back into rhythm. Uh, he was not in great rhythm early. Um, he saw that. He sensed that. He, he knew that he had to find the right triggers himself because he had been down that road before and he couldn't get himself back into that, that rhythm. So I think just the experience himself uh, that he's had um, – to allow himself to, to find that rhythm that he needed um, uh, is, is the difference and reminding him of it. You know, his drop was a little bit um, slow and then he rushed his, his delivery. He got back into a great rhythm uh, and, and it, was, it was pretty clear by the second quarter he was back to that, that kind of consistency. So it speaks to his experience, his knowledge of what he needs to do to be the the elite quarterback that he is, uh, and he made the self-corrections based upon the experience that he's had before, um, and good for him. Brian, on the, uh, the roughing penalty on Harold, after getting to go see it on film, curious what, what you saw, and then also how do you all teach your pass rushers what to do in that situation when the ball is out? Well, you know, we actually talked about it. Um, you know, we, we had a perfect example of that. Um, last week or the week before where Andre Sams had a, um, a collision over the middle with a Mississippi State player where he did a terrific job and we slowed it down in front of the team where it could have been a targeting penalty but he led with the shoulder did not come near the head or the neck and it's what we said you have to be intentional when when you're you know, hitting somebody today. You have to be intentional about how you hit them. If not, if you lead with the helmet, if you get into the head or the neck, you put yourself in jeopardy of a targeting penalty which hurts the team and hurts you. So we had actually shown that video to our team uh, last Monday. So Harold knew exactly. He, he, was, he was running full speed at a quarterback that was out of the pocket. And... Um, just trying to get him on the ground. Um, hit, him, hit him in the chest with his arm, extended his arm into his chest, didn't get to the head, didn't get to the neck, and it was interpreted as unnecessary. We think that was as unnecessary as, you know, Logan Diggs, uh, you know, late in the game getting a two-hand uh, hit into the, to the face. So we'll leave it up to our, um, 
you know, supervisor officials to give us guidance on that, and he'll he'll uh, he'll look at the plays and, and report back to us. Speaking of Logan Diggs, uh, just your ability to run the ball late and just the run game kind of coming along in the last couple of weeks as well. What are you seeing there from the offensive line perspective that's making that possible and, and obviously some skill from Logan? Yeah, I think it's comprehensive. I think it's the offensive line uh, certainly doing a great job, combination blocks. Uh, I think the backs are running hard um, with intent. Um, we're not looking to bounce it out. We're low pads. We're taking four, five, six yards, um, putting ourselves in good down and distance situations accordingly. Um, we're getting better blocking on the perimeter uh, from our receivers that are allowing some of these runs to open up to be bigger runs. So I think it's just a, it's just a commitment to a physicality um, that you need in your run game. Ryan, just an injury report for the week? Yeah, so, so leading into it, we don't have anybody right now that we would list as uh, anything but probable for the game. You mentioned also last week that I think it was that Malik Neighbors had, over the course of his career, learned how to play every receiver position. How, how yes. did he get to that point? Well, we started um, a little bit of it um, last year, um, moving him around a little bit. Um, with with uh, Kayshawn because we wanted to make sure that we got enough touches for everybody. Uh, and then this spring is when we started to accelerate that process. And then we carried that over into preseason camp. Um, he knew the W position really well. Kayshawn played primarily out of the Z position. So once we knew that we had somebody that knew the W, we spent a lot of time this uh, spring with him at X and Z. Uh, and, and that allowed the learning curve to be much easier when we installed in preseason camp, and that's why you've seen him all over the field. He made some really good catches uh, to the field, um, as you can imagine, that were clutch for us, uh, that he normally wouldn't have those opportunities because he had been – every time we had him in the boundary, it, it was – it was difficult coverage because they had a safety over the top. Those were a couple of catches that he made. The one that was really tight coverage, a great catch, he has a safety that's over the top. And it's it's a tough living if you don't move him around. Hey, Coach, uh, right here. It, with the success of the running game o over that fourth quarter, do you think part of that had to do with the fact that you guys were just spreading out their defense so much with that deep passing attack? Or do you think those two things complement each other? Well, <sighs> Yes and no. I mean, the numbers were still favorable for them. Uh, and I think they were in a situation where, you know, they still were bringing down an extra hat. They felt like they had to play man coverage in that situation and, you know, probably wanted us to throw the football um, because they knew what our intent was, and that was to take that clock down. Um, so we were still running it with uneven numbers in there. Um, but like I said, that was much more about a will um, and a desire to, to, to just get the extra yards, and I think our backs did a great job. Uh, Coach, on Arkansas's second possession, Major Burns makes a tackle where the guy's literally inches away from scoring, and it saves you four points. Uh, he's done that before the Alabama game last year. What can you say about his hustle and some of those plays early in games that – you know, really add up to winning later. Yeah, and, and again, I think that that's kind of, you know, some of the things that we're talking about is that um, we're not perfect. Um, we've got a long way to go. This group really cares, and, and they play hard. We, we just need to get our guys um, to do the ordinary things extraordinarily well. And if they do – and we stay away from some of these self-inflicted wounds. I like what we have going. Um, and so our meeting is going to be one where we're going to show them some of the things that they have done. And, and uh, when 11 guys are doing their job, it's, it's when we get outside and try to do some other things because we're getting those kinds of effort plays from our guys. Uh, just any update on Greg that you might have, but also – kind of a guy that you're speaking to is the work that Jefferson's doing inside. Yes. So what have you? What did you see in him to get him here, and how is that kind of paying off now that he's getting more time? Um, Greg is is um, making progress, and, and all I can tell you is this is such a long and, and lengthy process. Um, 
And uh, as of Saturday, which was the last report, I'm going to be there today. I'll go to there today. We've tried to um, – so many people want to get there, and I'm sure so many um, here too. But um, he needs rest. Uh, he needs to, to recover. And, and when you have a, a lot of people going there, and it just takes a lot of his energy away from him. So he's starting to, to make the kind of recovery that, that his doctors want. And, um, you know, we're just, you know, obviously every single day we're getting uh, to the point where he's making that, that, that recovery necessary for him to be up and around. So we're making progress. Um, the second part of the question was um, Jefferson. Uh, he's just, he's twitchy, he's, he's, he's extremely strong. Um, and, and we're going to look at him, you know, playing a little bit more uh, on the nose in, in our three down because, uh, you know, he can do a lot of things for us. So uh, playing some nose, um, you know, that kind of physicality and, uh, you know, what he can do for us in, in our, our three down front. Um, you know, I think he'll, he'll make a difference for us. Hey, Coach, four games into the season, do you guys feel like you've kind of found your rotation at running back, and what's been the evaluation of that room overall now that you kind of have everybody? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it kind of showed itself kind of the way I've been talking about it is that we're going to go with the, the guy that's, that's running well. And, you know, Diggs was uh, – you know, physical. I mean, but you know, you you saw Emery in there. Um, he he ran hard. Uh, Williams, you know, rips off a big run for us. The Diggs obviously had the lion's share because you know he was running physical. He was running through guys, and I, I think there's going to be a rotation all year. I, I don't know that it's always going to be one guy that that gets the highlights, but uh, it was Diggs this weekend. Um, but but I think it's it's still going to be a number of guys getting. Um, carries at that position we've got the gr the kind of depth necessary to to continue to do that good thank you